السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم ٹو اے حجاج ڈاٹ کو پوڈ کاسٹ ٹوڈے آئی ایم ٹرولی ایکسائٹیڈ بیکاز آف دی گیسٹ دیٹ ویو گاٹ ود اس دا گیسٹ ہو ریلی ہیز ہیڈ این انفلوئنس آن مائی لائف بٹ فار یو گائز ایم جسٹ کین گو تھرو اے فیو تھنگس اباؤٹ 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 دا شیخ دیٹ آئی ہیو ود می ٹوڈے دا شیخ ہیز نیم از شیخ ذوالفقار میمن and he is uh, at, at currently at the moment he uh, is in Medi- uh, medina he lives in medina and he is a teacher there he also uh, is a god at the prophet sallallahu's grave he's the uh, sorry he's a member of the uh, council of uh, commanding the good and forbidding the evil and he's in charge of the english section he's been studying for years and years and years Uh, and just to give you a little bit of background into uh, his journey of study, he studied in, he obviously st- his journey starts in Leicester. So we're talking about a UK, um, uh, a person from the UK who went on to, uh, t- went on to these heights that, that I'm talking about. Um, so Sheikh started in Leicester. He then, uh, after uh, that, he went to Darulum, Berry and Kidderminster where, uh, and he did his um, memorization of Quran there and became a Hafiz. After that, he went to uh, Gujarat, continued uh, studying there uh, in the... B- is it the... Dabel. Dabel. Sorry, I'm seeing it in an English accent there. Mm-hmm. Sorry. And then studied in Medina University. He studied Arabic. He studied in the Institute of Sharia and in the Faculty of Hadith and did his postgraduate uh, diploma there as well. And he just recently... Um, Uh, finished his master's in which uh, I was reading online that uh, Sheikh managed to get uh, the highest mumtaz mm. in that as well and Sheikh is considering a PhD uh, potentially at Medina University as well Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Sheikh Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Welcome uh, to to this uh, amazing podcast that we've got we're really grateful for your time mm-hmm. uh, when you came here to Birmingham uh, I noticed that the uh, the students who had come to actually attend w- um, were coming from London were coming from all around the Midlands mm-hmm. so the fact that you've given us this time we really do appreciate it and jazakallahu khairan Sheikh I just want to kick off and start asking about how I mean for us a person from the UK going on to study and do all these things how does this journey all start I mean you're in Leicester you're uh, you know studying obviously uh, how did the journey towards knowledge actually begin Alhamdulillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma ba'd First of all I would um, like to thank you and the organizers for allowing me to be present here today and to share a few words and a few experiences of my life i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he blesses this program and makes it successful i mean and for those who are listening that it be beneficial for them and it, that they may be able to reflect and take away something positive i mean um, my journey with regards to seeking knowledge uh, started uh, i was a you can say a young sp- you know spoiled brat <laughs> as he wanted to say i was the first grandson in my family oh right so i was very dear and beloved uh, you know by my grandfather yeah um, my mother tells me that when i was born um, my uh, grandfather actually took me away so i grew up with my grandparents thinking that they were my parents oh subhanallah and uh, i remember when i was in school and we were doing uh, something about when the month of ramadan would come in school when we was in infant school you know we started doing something about uh, ramadan like they say yeah you know? yeah absolutely so i came home and i started to speak to my granddad and we were and i saw a few pictures of uh, you know the kaaba and mecca so i told my granddad i said you know i have this desire that you know dad can you take me to mecca Subhanallah. So my grandfather just said yes. He said okay, I'll take you. Yeah. So after Ramadan passed by and finished, uh, my grandfather uh, he decided to take me and myself and him. He booked our tickets to go for Umrah. Wow. So we went on this journey for Umrah and it was only me and my granddad and uh, I knew nothing and uh, I landed in uh, Jeddah airport and I had my ihram on. And uh, as we landed, I heard the adhan you know being said you know, yeah. at the airport loud yeah and that just uh, baffled me and was the most amazing thing that i've really seen everybody just stopped uh, yeah. all the counters just closed wow. and everybody started to go towards the masjid and to pray to pray and i remember yeah. it was fajr salah yeah. so we had uh, just uh, landed before fajr salah and then it the, the journey continued and 
uh, after that we got to Mecca and I made Umrah and I remember when I prayed my first Salah uh, in the Haram uh, the way we usually are brought up here and the way we pray is very different to the way they pray in uh, in Saudi Arabia you know they do Rafal Yadain and they say Amin aloud yeah. and this, I was never exposed to these things All right. so I saw many different Muslims around around me praying in the same line but praying very differently mm. and for a nine year old this was something different yeah absolutely who was when just praying in his local yeah. masjid in Leicester a local masjid was Masjid al-Falah in Leicester in Leicester that oh. masjid was opened by the Imam of the Kaaba Sheikh al sumail rahimahullah ta'ala oh, I was there actually as a young kid when he came to open the masjid when yeah. it was built so when I saw all this I started asking my granddad questions now my granddad was a very simple man he was yeah. uh, illiterate you know he couldn't even read the Quran he just knew a few surahs of wow. the Quran and uh, so there was a lot of, uh, um, you can say, dialogue between me and my granddad. And yeah. all these things were just happening. And a lot of things were being processed in my brain as I was seeing things. And you know, I was meeting people and I was talking to them. I was only nine years old. This is in Mecca. This is in Mecca. Yeah. The incident that really changed my life is that uh, after Fajr, we prayed Salatul Fajr, me and my grandfather. And, you know, you have these small buffets where yeah. they make you tea and uh, famous yeah. sandwiches. Yeah, yeah. So me and my, I said to my granddad that I wanted the egg sandwich. You know, the egg sandwich was very famous. You know, they call it mulays in, uh, in, uh, in Saudi Arabia. Right. Right? It's like an omelette type of a sandwich. Okay. Really nicely made to put this shatta, which is like a hot sauce. Okay. It's not really hot, but you know, for I've us. I've never actually tried this. I think the next and, time I look uh, out for it. Yes, so <laughs> they have this sandwich. So we decided to take the sandwich. And because I'm left-handed, I write with my left hand. Mm. Uh, we were standing there and we were eating and I was eating with my left hand. Yeah. And all of a sudden, uh, an Arab... Saudi Arab comes up and you know he comes and he hits my hand yeah. you know <laughs> left hand like this yeah so I got really shocked and he says you're not supposed to eat in an Arabic he goes you know don't eat with your left hand he said that could be shimal yeah and I looked at him and I was just shocked why is he you know yeah. poking my why did he hit my hand like that so my granddad said that we don't speak Arabic you know he said yeah. no, mafi Arabi you know the, <laughs> the usual words of the hijaj they know they Absolutely. always say mafi Arabi so he could speak English. So he started speaking in English and he said to me that uh, the shaitan eats with his left hand. Yeah. The Muslim should eat with his right hand. So I said, th thank you. I said to him, thank you very much. And uh, then he started asking the way we were from. Yeah. After he asked uh, where we were from, he said to me that, uh, do you know Arabic? He asked me. And I said mm. to him, yes, I know Arabic. So he says, what do you know in Arabic? So I recited the Fatiha. <laughs> 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 and he started smiling. He said, no. He said, do you know what Allah is saying to you? Yeah. So I said no. So he said, "How can you be a Muslim? How wow. can you be a Muslim wow. and say to me that you are reading the words of Allah, but you don't know what they mean? Don't wow. you think that you should learn the Arabic language and understand what Allah is saying to you?" Yeah. And that changed my life. So I said to my grandfather, "Dad, I want to go back to England and I want to go and learn Arabic." And I promised him. He said really? to me, "Do you promise me that you will learn the Arabic, Arabic language, language and you will understand what Allah is saying to you?" I said to him, "Yes, inshallah, I will." So that's one wow. of the ways of how my path for seeking knowledge yeah. uh, changed. Before I went to Mecca, I had all these dreams that I, you know, I wanted to be a pilot and I wanted to be this yeah. and <laughs> I wanted to have my own restaurant. And yeah. you know, in school, we were having this uh, uh, restaurants that we were opening. You know, I was a manager yeah. there, so I had these <laughs> dreams. So when I came back, I came back with a completely different dream. Yeah. I said to my friends, "I've changed my dream. I want to learn the Arabic language. I want to learn what Allah is saying to me. And the first thing I want to do is memorize the Quran." No. Wow, subhanAllah. I mean, we, we at Hujaj.co, we do this uh, exhibition as well. Mm. And we always uh, talk about how Hajj and Umrah will change people when they go over. Mm. I had absolutely no idea that uh, Umrah was actually the starting point for your journey of mm. knowledge as mm. well. And, uh, you know, that is that really is uh, quite inspiring. So, Sheikh, something I wanted to ask you um, was about your journey of knowledge. So, once you actually got to that point where you decided that's it, I'm going to go into uh, and learn Arabic and I'm going to learn the deen of Allah. How did that journey go for you? Um, just give us a bit of background. So I went back to England and uh, I was very excited. And uh, you can say that uh, I went into that mode where I was very Islamic. So I started yeah. <laughs> uh, um, reading books and started mm. spending a lot, of it, a lot of the time in the masjid. Mm. Um, but I was a very weak student when I was in Madrasa. Really? You can say, so I wasn't uh, the brightest of students when I was in Madrasa. Yeah. So you can probably say I was the, the third last or the second last in my class. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. <laughs> so um, it was a big challenge for me uh, at that moment in time. So um, on one side, I had this enthusiasm and uh, this, uh, uh, you can say, zeal for seeking knowledge and yeah. wanting to learn. 
and then at the same time I was a wasn't a bright student. Mm. I remember that I used to always come in the what we call imtihan or the exams. Yeah. Uh, you know, would always be second last or third last in my marks. Wow. So this continued for a few more years, ten, eleven, twelve, until uh, I decided that uh, you know my granddad said that if you want to learn the Arabic language, yeah. that you have to memorize the Quran. Mm. So then, Subhanallah, you know, I I remember that my when we were making Umrah, yeah. and uh, my grandfather told me that uh, uh, for somehow he knew about this, and uh, still till this day he's passed away now, Rahimullah. Mm-hmm. I always wonder how he knew about this, and he said to me that uh, if you drink Zamzam and make du'a, then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accepts all your du'as at that time. So at that time I made all my du'as. Really? And I made du'a that you know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala make me hafiz of the Quran. I made du'a that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me like you know like 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 the scholars you know yeah. I knew I was a bit young but I just knew I didn't know any, no, no scholars in specific yeah but I just said that I wanted to become like the sahabas and become knowledgeable yeah so I came back and the years passed by until I enrolled in my local masjid and I started to do hifz yeah and then one of my teachers uh, you know who I was there he, not only was he I was memorizing Quran with him again I was a very very slow student hmm I used to memorize about five lines a day, and that was very difficult for me. Mm. So the class used to always see me as a weak student, and you know, mm. as a, as a you know, time waster, like you, yeah. you know, like you would, see, like you could say. And they, 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 nobody had this hope that I would actually finish the Quran and something, yeah. do something like this. And then, Subhanallah, I just know that, uh, you know, I started eating um, almonds. I started yeah. eating raisins. You know, yeah. my mom was really trying hard for me. For know, the memory mom, to increase. The so memory. my mom gave me a lot of support. You know, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reward her. I mean. uh, but nothing was really I wasn't progressing at that time and then yeah. subhanallah I can still remember that one day I just was uh, was asleep and uh, I woke up that mo- morning and uh, I started memorizing the Quran and I memorized the whole page you know we I can still remember it was the the third juz and it was la yattakhidil mu'minun al-kafirina awliya min dunil mu'minin I've still got that page marked yeah. and I memorized the whole page within 20 minutes Wow, and uh, you know, st- and uh, the thirteen lines Quran that we have, you know, the yeah. the, oh, the, the usual South African print. Yeah, and I went there, and uh, you know, we went to we used to go to madrasa between five to eight, and I went there and I gave my sabakin, and my teacher was shocked. <laughs> and then after that, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala just uh, you know, he opened uh, the bounties for me, to the extent that uh, uh, in the end when I started to um, memorize the Quran in one day I memorized 23 or 24 pages almost almost in one day in one, one day that was just when I was finishing wow know. so I had a record in Kidderminster I don't know if it's been broken or well, that was the set benchmark rec- you know record uh, that the I record did, in, you know, in, in Kidderminster in Kidderminster you know Medina Tulum, yeah. Medina Tulum they call yeah. it I think it was 23, 24 pages, almost a juice. Oh, I think it's the 25th juice I remember I memorized <laughs> that Allah. You know, we used to have Mutala between 5 to 7 yeah, and so I memorized a few pages then, and then I sat after dinner in the evening and after fajr, and then when I went in the morning at nine o'clock, uh, classes I used to start I think uh, eight past eight or nine. Yeah, so I gave twenty five to twenty three, twenty four pages of sabak, more more than three quarters of the of the juice. Wow, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, that's how it really. That's started. amazing. <laughs> that really is amazing. Mm-hmm. Subhanallah. And uh, what you, what you what you're saying right now is reminding me of. Ibn Hajar, mm. uh, the story of Ibn, ha- Ibn Hajar, yes. because he went and drank Zamzam no. and asked Allah to uh, become mm. of the level of Imam al oh, yes. right? And then he came back, and then there's a story of him memorizing all of Surah Maryam in a day as well. Yes, yes. And <laughs> this is sounding a lot like that, yeah, Subhanallah. Right. Mm-hmm. And how Zamzam is something which the du'as are accepted. accepted yeah. So when you managed to memorize the Quran and you went from here did you uh, how did where does where does medina come in so you went to india yeah so what actually happened was that uh, uh, in um, in medina tul ulum you know we had an examiner that would come and uh, he would have a 20 pound note and he would say that i don't give this 20 pound note to anybody so mm. i was the only one in my class who had memorized the quran and had submitted that i would give a whole quran exam yeah and i used to finish reading my revision which we call dor uh, i used to read about 10 juz uh, every day so in three days I would finish wow so that's uh, one of my te- my teacher was actually from Mecca okay he was originally from Mecca but yeah. uh, I believe now he's in Canada who we memor- I memorized the Quran with in initially the the, uh, the last ajza or the last parts yeah so he tested me for almost two hours yeah and alhamdulillah uh, you know I think it was two or three times where I could have made a mistake but I went back and corrected myself so okay. at the end he took out the 20 pound note and <laughs> gave me the 20 pound note and, and that, that you know we used to get a 51 
<laughs> yeah. first person to get a 51. Yeah. 51 is the highest mark when he hives. Oh, you understand? Right. Mm. Uh, I got the 51, alhamdulillah, you know, in, in Medina to Ulu. Yeah. And from there, I decided that I didn't want to study in England. I mm. wanted to go to the actual place, yeah. India. So nobody you know, from my family, nobody could facilitate for this. My parents were yeah. not for this, but my grandfather, as usual, supported me. Mm. So he told my father that he would take me there, enroll me there. So then I moved there and I went to study. So the f when I arrived in India, the first thing I, would, I learned was Urdu and then Persian. So I had to, uh, I had to oh, right. learn th two languages uh, together. So I learned Urdu and Persian. Then yeah. I started to learn Arabic. And that's when my uh, path for seeking knowledge of understanding the Quran started in India. Can I just ask, I've heard that you know eight languages, is no, that true? That, yes. Uh, eight languages? Yes, I speak eight <laughs> languages, alhamdulillah, yes. Yeah, from amongst them is Urdu, Persian, English and Arabic. These are the oh, four main languages. That's four of them, yes. subhanAllah. Yes. Oh, okay, so you went to India and you, you learned and these languages. And that's what I So then I yeah. en uh, enrolled into one of the most famous institutes in Gujarat, known as Jamia Islamia Tanimuddin Dabel. Dabel. And I studied mm. Urdu, Persian and Arabic, three languages. Mm. So I studied there. Mm. I had a teacher who taught me Arabic. Uh, he was a teacher who taught the same subject for 45 years. So yeah. it was very f firmly grounded. Yeah. So I was um, I was honoured of studying my, uh, you know, the foundations of the Arabic language with him. Yeah. You know, Kitabu Nahwa and Kitabu Sarf, like they yes, call it. Yes. yes. Yeah. And then from there you went to Medina yes, University. Yes. Uh, then I had some studies where I completed because I had a lot of uh, passion for Hadith. Yeah. Uh, and uh, when I st when I was able to uh, understand Arabic language to a certain level, I started reading a lot of books on Hadith myself. Okay. And um, because of that, uh, the, in the, the, the sur surrounding environment where I was studying had m more to do with fiqh. So I studied the Hanafi fiqh for, you can say, five to six years. Yeah. I studied the usul of the Hanafi fiqh. Mm. And then after that, I decided that I wanted to move on to a place where it th th that place just taught, um, taught hadith. Yeah. So then I was told that uh, the best place for me would be to go to Medina University. Oh, I see. So then I came back to England yeah. and I, I was here in England for a little while. I finished college and then I applied. Yeah. And then Alhamdulillah got accepted yeah. to study at the Islamic University of Medina. Ah, subhanallah. And then you went to Medina University, studied Arabic. Yes, so I went there and I studied Arabic. The, I already yeah. knew Arabic when yeah. I went there, but I wanted to get into the mode of studying yeah. because the medium of our education in India was the Urdu language. Yeah. And the medium of uh, our education in <coughs> Medina was Arabic. Yeah. So I wanted to get into the habit of being able to understand explanations in the Arabic language. Yeah. So that's why. And ah, also right. another reason why I enrolled into the Arabic language institute is that I wanted to see their way of teaching. And, yeah. you know, like we have a TEFL in the English language, yes. teaching English as a foreign language. Yeah. I wanted to see the Arabs of how they taught uh, Arabic as a second language. Mm. So I could go through the whole system so that when I wanted to teach Arabic, I could learn from them and benefit from them. Yeah. So that was the other reason of why I also enrolled into the Arabic Language Institute, knowing the Arabic language. Yeah. And also the third reason was that it was uh, give, given me an opportunity to attend the Halaqatul Ilm in the Prophet's Masjid and yeah. memorize a lot of other stuff yeah. of not being pressured. Of, of of learning something which I was learning for the first time. Yeah, absolutely. And then that mm. paid off in, yes, in dividends. So your journey of knowledge takes you through this route. Mm. How did you get to? Because when I went to Medina, I saw you at the Prophet grave. Mm. How how do you get that honor of of being um, you know in charge of the English section of? The council of uh, enjoining the good and forbidding the evil, and which means that you are standing there at the Prophet Sallallahu grave. What actually happened was that uh, once I was praying in the Prophet Sallallahu Masjid, and an incident happened between some security guard and somebody who was from England, mm. and they they could not uh, understand what he was saying. Mm. So as I was walking past, uh, somebody who knew me that I could speak English actually called me and told me to translate. Mm. So the issue got escalated to the office and I went there as a translator and after I translated for them the head of the department asked me for my number and said to me and said to me that uh, I would like you to come and work for me. Yeah. So I said to him oh, it would be an honor to come and work for you. Now I didn't know what the, yeah. what the was you know what what the, what this job was what, oh, what so the job title was. You didn't was. actually know that, that this this is what he was offering. Offering. Yeah. So but he said to me that there's an exam and there's an interview. So if you pass the exam a small exam and a small interview you know you could be selected for you know mm. this job. But you know, he goes, I will put a very strong word <laughs> and highly recommend you. Yeah. So I said to him, Jazakallah khair. So he took my number and just before Hajj, um, looking in uh, Shawwal, he phoned me, the actual head of the mm. department. He mm. didn't forget. Yeah. And he said to me, that, Can you come to my office in Bab Makkah and I would like to see you? 
Yeah. So I saw him and he gave me a form and he said, can you fill this out and give it to me? He asked for a photo. Yeah. And I filled out the form and everything and he said, I'm going to submit this and next week, one day, or yeah. the following week, come and see me. Yeah. So I went there for the following week and he said, now you need to you know, write an exam. So I went there and it was a exam which asked a lot of questions related to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's grave, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, issues on Aqeedah. And Alhamdulillah, I passed that exam. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Then I was told uh, with regards to an, an interview that would happen. So there was three sheikhs that, uh, uh, you know, one of, uh, that were interviewing that day. And one of the sheikhs who's been there, he's passed away now, Sheikh Nasir, I know him. Mm. He said, I always ask uh, the people who I interview this question. And I've been asking this question for uh, decades. Yeah. And uh, nobody, can, nobody answers this question. I'm still wanting to meet the person who yeah. would answer this question. Okay. So he asked the question, and you know the question was with regards to a statement which Imam Malik rahimahullah said, and uh, Qadi Iyad m- mentions this in uh, you know in one of his books in Ashifa that uh, Imam Malik was asked about the etiquettes of giving salams to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and what should a person do? Should a person hang around there after he's given salams, or should he leave? Yeah. So Malik said, "Inni la ara ayyqifa in the qabr of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, walakin yusallim wa yamdi." I don't see it befitting for anybody to stand at the Prophet ﷺ's grave except that he gives salams and he leaves. Just like Abdullah ibn Umar, oh. as it been narrated in the hadith of Sunan Abi Dawood, that whenever he would come from a journey or come back from a journey, he would come to the Prophet ﷺ's grave, he would say, Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah, Assalamu alaikum ya Khalifa da Rasulullah, Assalamu alaikum ya Abati, and then he would walk. Mm. Mm. So this uh, statement of Imam Malik has been yeah. uh, attributed to um, uh, Qadi Ayyad that he mentioned this. So he asked me that is this mentioned? So I said no. This has been mentioned in a book called Al Mabsud, which is a manuscript book, and it's lost. Mm. But Qadi Iyad has mentioned this. So I people see. usually give the reference of Qadi Iyad, but it's not Qadi Iyad. Qadi Iyad is just quoting the asal oh, book I is Al Mabsud. Yeah. So he knew that I had known and I had done research. So he got up and he shaked my hands and he said, "Wow, wow. You know, which country are you from?" <laughs> Yeah. And I said England. He said, "Khalas." He said to the other sheikh, "He said, take this boy on. You're gonna train him." Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I, I was just shocked at what had happened. <laughs> yeah. you know. And uh, Alhamdulillah, that happened. And after that, uh, you know, I got a phone call after two weeks telling me that uh, they had prepared a badge for me. You know, to, to pay. You know, we have a badge that we wear uh, yeah. to work on duty to, when you're yeah, working. Yeah. Because yeah. we have a lot of people oh, of working course, around. It's a big yeah. mustard. Yeah. People, not everybody knows you. Knows, yeah. So if you have a badge, you can pass through anyway. Nobody can stop you if you're talking. And nobody yeah. interferes. So they phoned me and they said to me that you know you need to come and start work on this day, and the badge was ready, and um, I went there. Yeah. And uh, when I went there, they told me to log in. You know, we used to have a register. Yeah. That we'd sign in and sign off. So I signed in and uh, I was given the badge and uh, the person said to me that, uh, y- you know, um. You need to go down to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's grave. They're waiting for you. Mm. So I took the badge and walked out. <coughs> and then I walked back in again. I said, I think you've got me mixed up with somebody else. <laughs> they said, no, we, we know it's you. Yeah. Her name is Al-Fuqar Ibrahim. Mm. Ma- Al-Maymani. Mayman. Yeah, so you go down to the Prophet Sallallahu grave. I said, nah, you guys have definitely <laughs> got something mixed up. Uh, so I asked wow. him actually two, three times. And he started laughing. He goes, why do you keep asking me? Because I know where you've been allocated. <coughs> so then I went down. Uh, you know, Subhanallah, and uh, through Babu, through Bab Makkah, we come through Bab al Baqi, mm. and I entered through Bab al Baqi. So there were guards there, and you know, I had a badge. So as soon as I saw, you know, showed them my badge for the yeah. first time, they moved out of the way. <laughs> it was something really big. <laughs> yeah. Wow, he just entered, you know. Yeah. So they said, Fadl, you know, Sheikh, go in. And um, I went in, and there was a brother, one of the our supervisors that was waiting there. <coughs> he just came in, and uh, <coughs> he actually Sorry. opened the gate where we get onto the Prophet Sallallahu grave. You know, it's quite elevated. He opened, he said, Fadl, ya Sheikh. Oh, wow. uh, subhanallah, I went there and I walked there for the first time. And behind the barriers. Yeah, 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 just that behind the barriers. And that was the most amazing feeding I've ever felt in imagine. my life. Wow, so, what an honor uh, that would have been to walk over there. And then, yeah. and then you, you stand there and you, you know, uh, guard the grave of the yeah, Prophet. I mean, that <coughs> what's that feeling like? That feeling is just amazing because this was the job which was the job of uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib. And Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas. You know, there is a pillar which is known the uh, Ustawanatul Harasa. That yeah. pillar was a pillar where the Sahabas used to safeguard the Prophet's house at night until the revelation came down that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that's going to protect the Prophet. And this is the same spot? The, the spot is still there. It's inside of Baqi. I'm uh, not Baqi, sorry, in uh, Riyadh al Jannah. Yeah. There's a pillar there 
after the pillar of itikaf, the next pillar at the corner, is known as Ustawanat al Harasa. That's where the companions used to start and safeguard. So safeguarding oh. the Prophet's wow. grave again exactly. is an honor. Like yeah. uh, you know, doing the job of Saad ibn Abi Waqas and Ali ibn Abi Talib. Exactly. Now, Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh. Uh, th- this is some really insightful stuff, and I want to find out a little bit more about uh, Medina, mm. and uh, and and get some uh, more knowledge on Medina and the etiquettes of visiting Medina and the history of Medina. Mm. Um, but we'll take a short break here, and uh, inshallah, join us after the break. Mm. Uh, you're listening to the Hujaj.co podcast. <laughs> 